Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you on how to get started using Terraform for beginners. Um, so this video I'm gonna teach you pretty much all the basics of what Terraform is and how you can get started on your, using it on your local machine for a variety of different use cases. So show you single cloud, multi-cloud, a few different types of infrastructure. Um, and also give you some kind of thought process behind it and best practices from what I see out in the wild uh, with real world companies using it. So you can get started using it for your own business or use case. Um, so if you're interested in Terraform and infrastructure as code, this video is for you. If you enjoy it, please like and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into Terraform. So first, I want to go through some kind of basic history around what Terraform is, why it's useful, um, and just some common use cases you might want to think about using Terraform in. Um, so number one, Terraform was developed by HashiCorp as an infrastructure as code, abbreviated as IAC, a tool that enables users to define, provision, and manage infrastructure uh, really across any cloud provider. So giving you one common declarative configuration language called HCL, which is HashiCorp configuration language, super original by them. Um, basically that is applicable across a variety of different underlying systems that allows you to define, hey, I want to configure you know, this stack of VMs that I want to deploy, a server, a load balancer, uh, without needing to actually go in and provision all of that manually. You just have a script that does it. Um, and this was released in 2014, uh, kind of alongside the same time that really cloud computing started taking off, um, as you can imagine. As cloud computing started taking off, you needed ways to automate uh, the provisioning of it uh, for large enterprises that are you know, using hundreds, thousands of deployments. Um, and it became the leading solution because it's got a cloud agnostic nature. It also has really good state management capabilities. So you can detect, hey, whether this has been deployed or not, um, and actually understanding, hey, active, passive, things like that. And unlike you know more traditional configuration management tools that it's kind of replaced, uh, Terraform focuses more on infrastructure provisioning rather than application deployment. So it's not really for deploying code onto infrastructure. It's for creating the underlying infrastructure uh, and doing it in a way that is you know reusable code, basically. So say I want to have the stack that I need to run a website, I have a Terraform stack that says provisions all those resources and then allows me to, let's say, create multiple web different websites uh, all using the same script to create everything needed to power that. Uh, it also lets you track changes to how you're deploying infrastructure through version control. You can have your Terraform uh, scripts CI CD controlled so you have a record of saying, hey, someone changed how this was deployed or what infrastructure is being used. You have a record of that rather than just you know relying on audit logs and who's clicked what in the UI. Uh, and it's also got really you know great ability to manage consistent deployments. If you're all using the same code, it's reusable code. Every deployment you create using that code is gonna be the same. Um, it's also got the ability to manage resources across many different cloud platforms. So AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Kubernetes, even on-premises environments. Um, so it's really applicable to almost any kind of infrastructure provisioning use case. Um, but some you know kind of common use cases for Terraform are typically things like cloud resource provisioning, multi-cloud resource provisioning and deployments, infrastructure automation, uh, disaster recovery planning is a big one, having the ability to, hey, I can spin up a total copy of my stack really quickly um, is great in the situations where you know everything's on fire and you need to quickly build kind of a parallel process there. Or optimally, you have that all ready to go if something does go wrong. Um, and also organizations in you know, kind of a micro level will use Terraform to deploy things like virtual machines, networking components, databases, security groups, um, and it really plays a key role in CI CD pipelines by enabling that automated infrastructure deployment alongside application updates. Um, it also facilitates things like blue-green deployments, immutable infrastructure patterns, uh, policy enforcement uh, via tools like Sentinel and making sure, hey, what I have a defined set of policies that I'm creating and, and enabling for this team via Terraform. Um, and you also can do things like scale Kubernetes clusters with it, uh, manage serverless applications actually, so spinning up infrastructure to run things on demand. Um, and it's just really good for having streamlined, consistent, uh, and cost-efficient infrastructure operations. So to get started with Terraform, um, you can either copy these brew commands from the website or just write them down and run them from here. Um, but from here, I'm going to go into Terminal and kind of switch into now more practical side, how you can install Terraform and then how you can actually use it for a few different use cases. Um, so now switch over to VS Code and we'll get started there. So here, let's copy and paste that. I'm just gonna hit enter here, run this, install Terraform, and we'll hit back once this is all done and installed. 
So then, if you, everything's gone smoothly, just run Terraform V, and this will tell you the version of Terraform that you are actually using. Um, so now that we've got Terraform installed, let's set up a directory for us to actually just you know kind of get started playing around with, create some Terraform scripts. Um, so here, make directory Terraform, cd into Terraform. Um, and then here, what we're going to do is open this up in our code editor and create a Terraform file. Um, so go here, Terraform, awesome. So now we'll go new file here. Um, and with Terraform files, the format you're going to use is going to be uh, file.tf. So first terraform.tf. Uh, and now you'll see you get this nice little pink T up at the top if you've got everything installed and set up. Um, and we can get started actually writing a script. Um, so the first thing you would want to do is, let's say, you know, I want to set up an AWS provider, right? So here, what I could do is here I have the provider AWS equals region US East 1. Um, and then what I can do next is um, go into, if I go to uh, command line, AWS. CLI, configure. So if you want to actually set this up, download the AWS command line um, and then Terraform in it. This will start running a local Terraform environment um, and we're now ready to actually start developing. So first thing we're going to do is just kind of show you how you can define, let's say, a simple uh, Ubuntu AMI EC2 instance. So for something like that, first you have your you know, provider AWS. Um, and then region, but here in the Terraform provider, really, what you're going to want to have is after you find you know, AWS where it's going to go, then you're going to start defining the resources you want to provision. So here we have resource as keyword, and then our type, our name for this uh, resource, AWS instance. This is just on the Terraform side of things, understanding what uh, it's going to be called. Then you have your Ubuntu AMI. Uh, and so an AMI, just a unique image, uh, so the type of image that you're going to install in that EC2 instance, that instance type, so the size of the EC2 instance, and then also any tags you want to apply. Um, and pretty much any resource provisioning is going to follow a similar structure to this. Uh, you're going to have you know, your uh, instance type, AMI, and any other fields around the configuration of that uh, applied here within your Terraform file. Um, and so. So then what you're going to do is you add this to your Terraform plan and then apply it. So here, Terraform plan, and then Terraform apply. Um, and then there's also going to be a state file that tracks resource configurations. So if we type in Terraform show here, this there's actually no state changes yet because we haven't actually done anything here. Uh, but if we wanted to refresh, Terraform refresh is how we would refresh any state changes. Again, nothing running right now. Um, and Terraform des destroy is how we would destroy the infrastructure as well, but I'm not going to do that yet. Um, so this is just kind of basic how you get started setting up. Um, but then the real power of Terraform comes with parameterizing some of these instances. So being able to say, hey, for a new team, you know, create infrastructure that says, hey, my t in instance type one appended, you know, team type one, right? And so here, what you can do is create, let's say create a file called variables.tf. Um, and then within this, what we're going to do is create a variable instance type. Um, and so here we have type of EC2 instance, type string, default is uh, T2 micros, our default type of EC2 instance. But then what we can do is actually have uh, a resource here. So we can adjust this to now reference that variable. So instance type, variable instance type. And then we can also set a output file. So outputs dot tf um, and this is basically so here just understand pay value this is what that instance is going to be output instance ip so getting the ip from the instance we actually create um, and then this you know so if, if i wanted to retrieve the output what i could do is do a terraform apply and then terraform output instance ip um, and so what this would do is if you know this is actually creating a resource is number one apply that resource and this is also something you know hey i could have a form actually that's injecting this variable with you know or a runtime with a different string with a different type still that default value um, and then you can actually test the output 
of one of the values that the Terraform uh, resource actually created. So a common workflow is, you know, when I create one resource, I need to then link it to another. You know, if I create a web server, I got to link it to the backend database. Um, and so these variables are how you're really going to be passing information between not only, you know, when you're creating the initial setup, but also between the different resources that you're creating as you create them to make sure they're linked together under the hood. Now, once you start getting a little more advanced, you know, not just creating single instances, you're also going to want to think about, hey, you know, how do you actually run scripts on instances after creation? Um, so here you could actually have something like, hey, uh, after I create this resource, I actually want to then run and install, you know, Nginx or, or some other thing on it. So, you know, infrastructure a lot of times is very bare bones. So you're actually going to want to install and trigger things and have that occur um, after you create that infrastructure. So this is a great way to do that. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about multi-cloud really quickly. So here, if you wanted to, within the same Terraform provider, you wanted to have different clouds, different resources, you just define different providers. Um, and then you define, hey, resource group, this goes here, the AWS goes here. Um, and so then when you use AWS, you know, tag name, it's going to automatically start going, find that in AWS, when it's Azure, in that resource group, you use Azure. Um, and you'll see actually a difference. So with Azure, you don't have the region and the provider, you have the region and resource. So make sure whenever you're creating a script, even though you know it's a common language, each resource is gonna have different fields across different cloud providers and different ways of recognizing it. Um, so that's really the basics of what I wanted to cover today. Uh, didn't really have much more else for you. I just really wanted to kind of give you a basic understanding of what Terraform is, how it's used on a very simplistic level. Um, if you enjoyed this video though, let me know if you want to see more. We can definitely go deeper into this Terraform subject. Um, but above all else, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.